Hey everybody, we're going to go through this assignment um, dealing with the different types of ways and the different things we can do with right triangles. So what first we're going to be doing is we're going to be identifying which of our methods we can use to find the x, but then we also are going to be um, finding x. So when I look at problem one here, which of these methods up here at the top is going to can I use? Well, I only have two sides and I don't know an angle. So when you have that, you might ask yourself, do I know any other pieces of information? And I see these two things right here. I know that this is what kind of a triangle? It's an isosceles triangle, but it's not just any isosceles triangle, it's an isosceles right triangle, which means that this is also 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So up here by special right triangles, you might put isosceles right. So you can keep track of that. So if you see a picture that says that, then you would know that that also is an isosceles right triangle. I'm going to zoom in a little more so that when Muhammad watches this, he can still see it. Okay. And this pencil isn't super sharp, so we're just going to have to make ourselves happy with it. So knowing that, what do I do? I know that I have a pattern to these special right triangles. I know that I have this template, and I'm going to put the template in a different color. Remember, this is a side, this is a side, and those two guys are the same. And then this is the S square roots of 2. Well, this is not a hard problem, is it? I don't even really need to do much math, because my S equals 10. So when I substitute that number in here, what's my answer? I know that this side is 10 square roots of 2, and that equals x. So that's my answer, and I'm done. I didn't even have to do any addition, any subtraction, nothing. That's why we like these special right triangles, is they are very quick to do if you have that kind of a triangle. But in reality, the majority of triangles you're going to come in contact with are not going to be 45, 45, 90s, or 30, 60, 90s, okay? So now let's look over here at number 2. At number two, we have an angle, a side, and they want to know another side. So in your little chart that we did today in class, and this one's not one that we finished. Let me get the one that we actually finished. So in my chart here, I'm finding, what do I want? My x is on a side. So we're going to go to finding a side. Now what do I have? Are they given, am I given a right angle and two sides? No. Is this a special right triangle? I'm trying to get them both in the same picture. Is it a special right triangle? Is it a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90? Well, no. The angle is 64, so it's not one of those. So what am I going to have to do? Am I given a right angle, another angle, and a side? Yeah. So I'm going to do trig. So this is a trigonometry question. So here, this type is B. I forgot to put the letter over here. This is a B, a special right triangle. Sorry. I said this one type is B. This is a special right triangle. And then number two is going to be D because it's a trigonometry question. And they've written the mnemonic here, but I don't like when they write it that way. I always like it like this because it reminds me that my ratios, what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. So I always write it like that for myself. All right, in this problem, I have an angle. So I know I'm doing trig, so that's going to be my angle, right? Let's do it in a color. You know how I like color. That's my angle. And I know I have an H. My H is opposite the right angle. And then I put my magic finger right down on that angle, and I'm touching both the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. So this is my adjacent, and this is my opposite. Well, this side is 10, this side's got nothing on it, and this side has x. So I'm not going to use my a. Which of my mnemonics has an o and an h? Because that's the two letters I'm dealing with. A sine. So the sine of 64 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I feel pretty confident that this point 
you guys can solve that, but I'm going to walk you through one of these trig functions of each type on this page. So here we cross multiply, so I'm going to have 10 times the sine of 64 equals x. Now it's okay if you like what we called the HANA method to leave, you can change that sine of 64 into the decimal that, it, that this represents. Remember that represents a number, sine of 64 is a number. When I put that in my calculator and we put in the sine of 64, I'm going to get a number because that is a number, it's 8.898794. So I could put that in place of the sine of 64 if I want, but I don't want to do that. We are going to multiply that times 10 here, and I know that this equals x equals 8.98. Well, let's say 99 when we round. So it's almost 9. Okay? Are we all good with this type of a problem now? So we know x is equal to 8.99 or approximately 9. Here we go again. You might want to look back over here, remember this sheet? What are we trying to find in that problem? We're given a side and an angle and we want to know a side. So let's go over here and it wants me to find a side. My variable is on a side. So am I given a right angle and two sides? No. In this problem, what am I given? An angle and a side. So is it a special triangle? Is it a 30, 60, 90? It is. There's a 30 right there. So 30, 60, 90. So we got to put our template. If you can't remember your template, remember it's on this paper right here. It's on the paper. Right there. That's the template right there. So I'm going to put it right down. My hypotenuse is 2L, and then I have L, and then I have L roots of 3. So 18 equals 2L. How do I get L by itself? Divide by 2 on both sides. I know L equals 9. So I know that this is 9, but what property, which of these letters up here at the top should I use? It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so that means this is a, a C type of problem. It's a special right triangle, 30, 60, 90. Do you see how those, that saves some time? I could have used trig. If you saw a trig problem here, you could have done that. But that's why I want you to refer to the sheet so you can kind of work your way through these different types of problems. All right, let's look at this one. Now in this problem, what do I want to know? I want to know an angle. So let's go through here. Let's look at our top of our thing. We're solving, and do we want to find a side or do we want to find an angle? Oh, we said we wanted to find an angle. So when we find an angle and we are given two sides, do we have two sides in this? We do. Then we're going to use the inverse Sokotoa. So we treat it just like a regular Sokotoa problem. So I'm going to find my H, my O, and my A, and there's my angle. Hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. Then I touch and I find my adjacent side, and then I know my opposite. What side did they not give me any information on was the A. So see if you can't set that problem up. I'm going to give you just a second to do it. Find your mnemonic. So we're going to have the sine of x equals O over H. Now when x is my angle, we got to get the divorce. I don't know if you remember that silly story. But this is how we do it. We find the second key and we push sine. We're going to get that little negative 1 up there. And in inside the parentheses, we just put that fraction. So we know here that x is, is 25 degrees if we round it to the degree. So 
x is 25 degrees. But what type of a problem was this? It was actually the trigonometry where we're doing that negative, the inverse. So this is an E type of problem. Okay? So we have done a B, a D, a C, and an E. I'm going to put little check marks. A B, a C, a D, and an E. Pythagorean theorem. We want to see if we can find one of those. Let's go over here and let's just look. For us to use the Pythagorean theorem, we're given a right angle and two sides. So let's look for a problem that has that. A right angle and just two sides. Nothing else but two sides, and they want to know a third. Oh, look down here at number 11. Number 11, is that a Pythagorean theorem? It is. So I'm going to put my little letter A here so I remember that's that type of a problem. What's your A, your B, and your C? Well, I don't know. It looks like this side's my smallest, so I'm always going to do that. But my C is always the hypotenuse, and then I'm going to put B. Okay, that make sense? And I'm kind of jammed up here at the top of the paper. So we know the theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is 5, B is X, and C is 13. So 25 plus X squared equals 169. And 169 minus 25, I don't know what that is. I could do it, but it's 144. Oh, that's still an issue in there, And to get rid of that square, what do we do? We take the square root of both sides, and I know X is 12. This is also a Pythagorean triple, but it's one of the uncommon combinations. So if you don't know that, remember, we can always use Pythagorean theorem even if we don't know it's a triple. So we did an A, so we've done an A problem. That leaves us with one geometric mean problem. And I'm going to choose a geometric mean. Remember, you're always looking for more than one triangle. And when I look across this paper, you see all of these are just one triangle? One triangle, one triangle, one triangle one triangle, but a bing two triangles. So I know when I've got geometric mean, I'm dealing with more than one triangle. So in class today, we did a green triangle as a big triangle. Do I know anything about two sides of that green triangle? Nope, I only know the hypotenuse of that one. So I'm not going to use that green. Now I'm going to look at, so that means I'm going to be using the red triangle and the blue triangle. And if it helps you to draw them apart, you can go ahead and do that. But do you remember what the geometric mean problems look like? They're those similarity problems. So we're looking for this fraction equals another fraction. What side is in both, what piece is in both the blue and the red triangle? Okay, well I know that this leg is the short leg of my red triangle. And this leg is the long leg of my blue triangle. Well, this is my short leg fraction. So my short leg of the red goes with the short leg of the blue. What is my short leg of the blue triangle? It's going to be this. Notice my blue triangle is just in the denominator. Now I know across the top, I've got to have my red piece that corresponds to whatever x is. Well, in my blue triangle, that what's x? It's the long leg. So I need to know what's the long leg of the red triangle. That would be my 8. Then you cross multiply. x squared equals 6 times 8, which is 48. And what is 48 the first?